folks. Today we're looking at whether keto really is one of the worst diets of 2020. Okay, so since I'm really into dieting and weight loss, I get these articles that pop up on my Google homepage. And so I was clicking around and apparently the US News and World Report released like their lists of the best diets for weight loss and just overall generalized health and stuff. Whatever. Now let me just start this video by saying I share what I know, I share my experiences, and I'm not saying keto is the best diet for everybody. Apparently it's not for the folks who made this list. I understand that everybody's approach to weight loss and health and weight maintenance and all of that is going to be based on whether a diet fits their needs and their lifestyle. For me, keto worked. I lost 170 pounds in two years doing that diet. I've still been on this diet for three and a half more years, maintaining my weight loss. And I know that it works for a whole lot of people out there. If you just Google it, if you go to forums, you will see how many lives it's changed for the better. So to start this video, I'm going to compare their number one diet, the Mediterranean diet with number 34, the keto diet. Okay, so this is their list for the best diets overall and the Mediterranean diet came in at number one. So overall, this diet is low in red meat, sugar, and saturated fat. And I've heard a lot about this diet. It seems like a great diet. But I have nothing wrong with this diet. So apparently people who live on the Mediterranean border countries, they just live longer, healthier lives. So you can see the scorecard here for the short-term weight loss, long-term weight loss, how easy it is to follow, and it's health. Whatever that means. Healthy for you, I suppose. And I'm not saying that it's not. You know, it sounds like they do eat a lot of fresh fishes and leaner proteins and, you know, whole grain foods. Yeah, I follow keto, but that doesn't mean that I hate carbohydrates. I don't think that they're the devil. I just think for a lot of people, they can't control their carb intake, and then that leads to health issues. Just gonna throw that out there. Now, the good thing about the Mediterranean diet, which I like, is that you can drink a glass of wine a day if you're a woman, or two if you're a man, apparently. So what can I eat? Well, they have, you know, some things here for the Mediterranean diet, buckwheat pancakes. I don't think I've ever had buckwheat in my life. Greek yogurt. I do like me some Greek yogurt. So I'll take it. Hi. Mediterranean pasta salad. All right. I do miss a good pasta salad. I'll throw that out there. I love chicken souffle. I get to eat that on keto. Roasted almonds. Them too. Love me some almond butter. Grilled salmon. Yep. We can eat that on keto. Quinoa. Not really. I mean, you know, that's pretty carby. Chocolate mousse. I can make me a good low carb chocolate mousse. Steaming mussels. Yep. Keto friendly. Pumpkin soup. I'm not really sure what would go into that, but if it's not a lot of sugar, you might be able to fit it into your keto day. French fries. Mm, not really, but if you've never tried radish fries or eggplant fries, you're missing out. Mm-hmm. Banana bread with peanuts. Eh, not really a keto food. I'm gonna move over. So I always have issues editing when I show screens. So will a Mediterranean diet help you lose weight? And then they give you some stats here. They said that following a Mediterranean diet is associated with lower levels of weight gain and less increase in waist circumference. So apparently they gave folks with type 2 diabetes two types of Mediterranean, Mediterranean diets, one with olive oil, one with nuts and then a control diet. And apparently the one with nuts did see a difference in waistline. I'm not really sure what that proves. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe somebody smarter than me can tell me what they're trying to say. <laughs> okay, so and then a different study gave 259 overweight patients three different types of Mediterranean diet. A low-carb Mediterranean diet, a traditional Mediterranean diet, or a diet based on the American Diabetes Association recommendations. And they also had to exercise 30 to 45 minutes per week. After a year, all groups lost weight, but the low-carb group lost the most amount of weight at 22 pounds compared to the traditional Mediterranean group diet, who lost 16 pounds. Hmm, interesting. Okay, but the jury's still out on whether it will actually lead to any weight loss at all, or a lower likelihood of being overweight or obese. So they talk about how the Mediterranean diet can be convenient. They talk about how if you go out to eat... Whoa. I think this is interesting. They talk about if you go out to eat, if you're sharing a plate, you know, you're dividing your food into two like the Mediterranean folks do, it will help you lose weight, obviously, because you're eating less. <laughs> You'll save time by cooking and storing meals ahead of time, apparently. Hunger shouldn't be a problem on this diet because of fiber and healthy fats, because they're filling. Now listen, y'all. When it comes to dieting, a lot of it's not about the food that you eat. It's about the habits that you are able to incorporate into your life. So obviously, if you're not overdoing it on, you know, difficult keto ingredients that you have to order through Amazon or something, keto can be just as convenient as a Mediterranean diet. Yeah, if you go out to eat and you learn what a real portion size is, 
you can still do that on keto. It doesn't have to be on a Mediterranean diet. I've been trying to learn this for a long time and it's not because of the food that I'm eating. It's because I just have food issues and I like the feeling of a full stomach. Um, if you've never Googled keto meal prep, I don't know what you're doing with your life if you're a keto fan. That's like one of the top Google searches when it comes to keto. Lots of diets allow you to meal prep ahead of time, not just the Mediterranean diet. Um, yeah, you'll also find lots of free resources. I'm one. If you go to Reddit, that's a big one too. Or a lot of Facebook groups. Hunger shouldn't be a problem to set. That is so true for keto too, y'all. Um, if you're eating higher fat and lower carb, you are reducing that roller coaster of blood sugar in your bloodstream, which means you're not going to have those highs and those lows. And in that low, that's when you feel hungry. So if you keep your blood sugar at a baseline throughout the day by eating higher fat and lower carb, guess what? You feel less hungry. Also, fat keeps you fuller for longer. OMG, and protein too. Throwing that out there. I like protein. Okay, now let's look at what issues they have with the keto diet. And we're going to scroll all the way down. DASH diet. I don't know what that is. Flexitarian, Weight Watchers, Mayo Clinic, Mind Diet, TLC, Nordic. Oh, I feel like I'm a Viking. This one, this one speaks to me. South Beach Diet. I tried the South Beach Diet. That was really, I don't know. Maybe just because I followed a book and didn't just do like overall generalization things like I can with keto. I don't know. Different time, different point in my life. That's a big thing too. You know, it just depends on what's going to work based on the point of life that you're at. You know, whether you're ready to commit to a lifestyle change, whether you feel like you can overcome some of your food demons if you're a food addict like me. Slim Fast Diets number 24. That is like 10 places over the keto diet. All right, keto diet. Overall score, 2 out of 5. Weight loss, 3 out of 5. Healthy, 1.8 out of 5. So let's see what they're talking about. What food can you eat on keto? Meat, bacon, eggs, poultry with skin and fish, oils and natural fat. Olive oil, canola, palm, cocoa, butter latte. What? <laughs> Never heard of cacao butter latte. I'm not sure what that is. Vegetables, spinach, kale, lettuce, broccoli, and cucumbers. They're not giving you a full list here. You can eat lean meats. You can incorporate fatty meats as long as they stay under your fat limit or your calorie limit. And oils and cheeses and things like that. Really, keto is not about the high fat. That's really more of a limit. If you've seen my calories video, which I need to redo, I talk all about that there. For weight loss, you definitely want to focus on a lot of leaner meats and then add in fats for flavor. What food can't you eat? Alcohol. Not recommended. You can drink a lot of alcohol. I dated a bartender when I was starting keto. I was drinking wine. I still drink wine. I had a gin and soda phase. There are lots of low carb beers. I don't know where they're getting this information from. There's a whole subreddit called Keto Drunk. Now, it's not recommended that you overconsume, obviously, and your hangovers will be worse, apparently. But you definitely do want to hydrate while you're drinking, but I feel like that's, you know, common knowledge for any type of, you know, food that you're eating. Sugar, obviously a no-go on keto. I mean, you can have it in small amounts. Vegetables have natural sugars in them. I eat sausages with sugars in them, so, you know. What food should you limit on keto? Carbs, starchy root vegetables. Yeah. All right, so let's look at the do's. Do choose grass-fed meats, skin on poultry, and fattier fish. Again, you do not have to choose fattier meats. Not a necessity on keto, especially if you're looking for weight loss. The only way you're going to be in a state of ketosis is if you keep your carbs low. That means that your body is going to run out of sugar for energy, and it will be forced to run on your fat stores if you're eating at a calorie deficit. You do not have to buy grass-fed meats, I have talked about this a lot. You do not have to buy expensive ingredients. Skin on poultry, not necessary. Although I love me some chicken wings and those always have skin on them. And I like me some salmon. But you know what? Not necessary. You can eat chicken breast. You can eat turkey. You can eat tilapia or cod. I don't think those are fatty fish. Tuna. Things like that. Dude, drizzle on coconut, olive, and flaxseed oils. Again, not a necessity. Especially if weight loss is your goal. I don't often use oils or butter. I prefer to add my fats in tastier ways like through cheeses or nuts. Don't eat carb-rich foods like bread or pasta. Obs, but they do make those low-carb options for those folks who want to include those. Don't go for starchy veggies like potatoes or turnips, right? But again, it's a spectrum. I incorporate carrots. Some people don't because they're a little bit sugarier. So, you know, do what you got to do as long as it fits your day and your goals. Cheese, brie, cheddar, manchego, cream cheese. Yeah, I love all cheeses. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm a cheese fiend. Beef brisket. Another one of the things that was in my last video when I talked about eating out and I was getting some barbecue. Spinach. All right, I like a good spring mix. Bacon. Not necessary. We advertise keto really well because we talk about all the fun stuff you can eat, but you do not have to eat bacon. In fact, 
If you're looking to meet a protein goal while keeping those calories low, I would say don't eat bacon. Yogurt, if you can find like a very low sugar one, why not? Cheeseburger, but without the bun, right? Don't get the bun. And again, you do not have to get high fat ground beef if you're making your own. If you go out, they're probably going to use a higher fat ground beef because that is tastier. You want to look at that protein to calories proportion that you got going on. Whole fat milk. I just use heavy whipping cream for stuff, but whatever. Chicken thighs, delicious. But again, you can also incorporate leaner meats like chicken breast. Stevia. Yeah, I used to make sweet treats all the time using stevia. And if that helps you get to your goals, great. I've gotten to the point where I just cut it out. Again, you can or you don't have to incorporate these things. So my big issue with how people view keto is they think it's all about the high fat. A lot of people disregard the low carb part, <laughs> but that's the main thing for being in ketosis is you just want to run out of sugar. So your body is forced to run on fat for weight loss. Anyway, and again, a lot of people go overboard with the high fat part. So if you're eating a pound of bacon every morning, you're probably not, you know, maintaining a calorie deficit for weight loss. And no matter what diet you're on, Mediterranean, DASH, Nordic, for weight loss, you have to be at a calorie deficit. And those are just the facts from your girl. Don't punch yourself. All right. So a lot of people say that keto is not a great diet because it's so restrictive and it's not good to demonize an entire food group, AKA carbs. Okay, first of all, I do not demonize food. I try not to associate any emotion with food because that is unhealthy. But, <laughs> and this is a big but, I'm going to compare what food addicts who are addicted to sugary and starchy foods go through with what maybe an alcoholic might go through. And I know that they're totally different and alcoholism is a very serious addiction, but I'm just going to point out some similarities. All right. Don't get mad at me. If you told an alcoholic, you know what? Over drinking is bad, but maybe if you keep a little bit of bottle of wine around, you can consume it, you know, without binging on it. That's probably not going to work out too well. Okay. Because they have this emotional, physical attachment to that alcohol, even if it is the nicer alcohol like wine and it's not like whiskey or something. Food addicts who are addicted to sugars and starches are kind of the same. If you tell them to incorporate healthy grains or whole grains into their diet, but that's something that they've binged on and they have food attachments with, and they have struggled with those foods in the past, it's going to be really difficult for them not to overeat or binge on those foods. So that's why I say it's not unhealthy just to, you know, cut some things out of your life. That's just my two cents. That's my spiel. So it really does irk me when people complain that, you know, keto is so restrictive. I had this woman who told me she was a nutritionist. Um, <laughs> I just met her out, you know, about a year ago when I was out with some friends and I told her that I follow keto and she, she was like, oh my gosh, that's so unhealthy. You know, you're, you're, you're demonizing a whole food group. I can't believe that this is happening to you. She, she was like, I was like, hold up, <laughs> hold up girl. What you talking about? I'm like the healthiest I've ever been in my life. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life and I do not miss bread. Okay. I don't miss whole grains. Sometimes I do miss a good watermelon or a mango, but again, that's something I can binge on because it's so good. It's so sweet. Mm. But anyway, the point is for people with addictions and bad food attachments to those types of foods, I say get them out of your life and maybe one day you will reach the point where you can incorporate them in smaller, you know, quantities, but I don't know if I'll ever be at that point. And I would say just be very cautious if you want to try and do that. Overall, it's a high fat, low carb diet designed to make body and our state where it's relying on fat for energy. Experts ranked the diet in the bottom half in all but the weight loss categories. But why? Why did they rank it so low? I don't get it. It just says that they did, but not their reasoning. They said it's minimally effective in preventing or controlling diabetes. It's not safe for people with diabetes. Um, if you have never seen Dr. Eric Westman and he's like a real doctor. Okay. He's not one of these fake doctors on YouTube. He like ran the Duke diabetes management clinic. Okay. He's the reason I've lost all my weight. Um, I love that man. And I owe all of my weight loss to that man. Anyway, it does prevent and cure diabetes. I don't know what they're talking about over here. Ease of following. Okay. I will say with all of the information out there, it can be hard to figure out the approach that you want to follow. My approach has changed several times. Um, so you've really just got to adapt the diet to your lifestyle. Whether you want to start out really high fat, just to get used to the food. And then maybe you want to incorporate some leaner meats, some less fun foods, or if you need all that fun food, I mean, you might get tired with that. It's just, you've got to adapt it to your life, but that's the same thing with any type of lifestyle change that you try and incorporate. People become very bored eating just fatty foods and fat and meat. Well, that's not really all you're eating. Um, and you can make awesome recipes. You can go to Pinterest or Google and just look at all of the plethora of food options you have. 
low on heart healthy. Now listen, I've heard a lot of people say that their doctor was shocked when they told them that they were on keto because of their cholesterol levels and all of that, their blood work was so good. Happened to me when I went to my doctor a couple years ago. I got my, I think it was after three years on keto when I lost all my weight, my blood work was fine. Nothing wrong with it. Long-term weight loss. I do think that this is an issue just for yo-yo dieting in general. A lot of people think I'm going to lose the weight and then I'm going to go back to eating the way that I want. But again, that's with any diet. You have to understand that this is a lifestyle change, no matter how cliche that is. Nutrition. Rated extremely incomplete in this category. They're worried about the diet's high saturated fat content. Now, if you start getting into research about saturated fat and heart disease, you'll find that opinions are changing. You know, more science is being done. I don't know. That's just what I've heard. Safety, again, people are worried about the high fat, but again, we know that eating fat doesn't make you fat. Now, it did rank pretty well for short-term weight loss, but again, I think a lot of people who are looking for weight loss suffer when it comes to maintaining it because they didn't consider it a lifestyle change, a change that they were going to make for the rest of their life. People are afraid of that. <laughs> um, personally, I pretty much know that I'm going to be pretty keto for the rest of my life, I assume. I mean, things could change in the future. It just depends on my lifestyle and how things change for that. But I have no issues right now because I made that decision a while ago that this was like what I wanted to do. So those are my thoughts on the U.S. News and World Report's lists rankings of the best diets and why keto was towards the bottom. Honestly, I think keto has a lot in common with the best diet, which was the Mediterranean diet. I think that you can incorporate those leaner meats. Definitely. I mean, I eat mostly lean meats and I eat those mostly throughout my weight loss. The difference is that on keto, we're not afraid of that higher fat content. But again, for weight loss, it is a limit. For weight maintenance, it is a limit. You do not have a fat goal. It's a limit. That's basically where your calorie limit comes from. You're keeping your carbs low. You're meeting a protein goal and then fat's your limit. But I do want to know what do you guys think? Has keto changed your life for the better? How long have you been on keto? Are you in weight loss or weight maintenance? I just want to know, you know, share your insights with me. Well, folks, that's about it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video and my thoughts on this article and all the things that we looked at today. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to like and subscribe. That would help me out so much. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, I will link all of that down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Allie. Have a good one. Bye.